Hey everyone, welcome to episode one of the Cozy Craft Club podcast. My name is Kate and this is Amanda and we're hey. really excited to be with you today. You might know the two of us because we used to host our own separate podcast. I was a host of the Stitch Addiction podcast. And I was the Knit Cute podcast, formerly not a podcast. And so now that our lives have sort of chilled out a little bit with the pandemic, we thought we would try podcasting together. We've been friends for over a decade and we just thought we'd give it a go. Yeah. That about sums up what we're doing here. <laughs> So anyway, uh, you can find me over on Instagram as so nitpicky, and, and I am underscore underscore Kate underscore reads there. Yes. Yeah. So we're doing this thing. <laughs> we uh, started talking a little over a year ago about when my family was supposed to be moving. I guess I could tell you a little bit about me in case someone out there isn't familiar with me. Hi. I'm Amanda. Um, my family is an army family and we are currently stationed in South Korea and have been here for almost two years. We're up in the north, up just south of Seoul. And uh, yeah, we were supposed to be coming home this summer, but because of the pandemic, we decided to extend a year. We're hiding out over here instead. That was a good choice. It was a very good choice, actually. <laughs> somebody who moved during the pandemic, I would not mm. recommend that at all. Yeah. We know people who are moving right now during it and we're just like, yeah, better you than us. We're, uh, we're staying put for another year. Not fun. So we started talking a little over a year ago and thought, you know, there's a good chance that Kate and I may live in very close proximity of each other, depending on where we go next. And we're discussing doing a joint podcast, maybe at that time which then evolved to talking about doing a distance video podcast. Mm -hmm. And it's taken us, what, about 15 months to get here, but here we are. Hey, we got there and that's all that matters. Yes. Yes, we've been set up with a name and our channels and everything ready to go since just before Halloween. And then both of us lost our knitting mojo and crafting mojo for a while. So, <laughs> yeah, life. It took a little bit longer, but we're knitting again and... Mm -hmm. We hope that you enjoy hearing from both of us. Yeah. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, like I said, my name is Kate. I live in Boulder, Colorado. I have a husband and a son and some cats that you'll meet, including this guy right here. This is Linus, or Siamese. Hey, Linus. He's Mr. Personality Plus, so he will be around a lot. Uh, we've lived in Boulder for less than a year now. It's a beautiful place with mountains, and it's quite a change from where we used to live, which is Lawrence, Kansas. I am a librarian, but I'm not working right now. I am helping my son do school from home this year. He is a freshman in high school. Ah, yes, I have um, those two. I have mm -hmm. two kids, a freshman and a seventh grader. Whew. Good times. <laughs> Never wanted to go back to high school, but I kind of feel like I'm a little bit there right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's something people never tell you before you have children is how immersed back into those ages you're going to be, even mm -hmm. with older kids, that all of that delightful trauma and stuff you experienced as an adolescent gets ripped wide open all over again as someone else you know lives through it and all the experiences well I don't get the social aspect as much because we're doing mm -hmm. online school here but I am helping a lot with the curriculum and it's funny what I can remember and what I can't remember mm -hmm. math cannot remember that mm -hmm. Whereas I do pretty Not well. a math girl. So, yeah, so let's see. We decided to start a podcast and uh, it's gonna be most of the usual stuff, I think. We're gonna talk about knitting and other crafts that we do. And depending on the times that we record, we'll talk about other topics too, like maybe what we're reading. Yeah. 
or what we're watching if we're making anything particularly good since I think like just about everybody else during the pandemic both of us upped our baking games and baked Definitely. goods became quite prevalent around here and uh, I don't know maybe just general talk topics just whatever comes to mind so do we want to start into crafting content or do we have anything else we'd like to talk no, about I say let's just let's just jump into crafting all right. Do you want to go ahead and go first? Uh, do we want to start with works in progress or finished objects? Doesn't matter to me. Whatever you feel up to. Okay. Well, I guess it depends on if you want to hear from me or Kate more first, because I'm going to be totally blunt here. I don't have a lot of works in progress going. I do one thing at a time and one craft at a time. So my section there is going to be a little boring, <laughs> but I do have some finished objects I can share. So I'm going to works in progress first. Sure. Okay. So my work in progress, I'm working on a sweater knit right now, and I am working on the Bright Access Tee, which is by Stephanie Lotvin, who is Jelly Bean Knits, or Tully Bean Knits? Tully Bean Knits. And it's out of this book, Knit Happy. So many great patterns in that book. Oh, yes. As you can see, I've got quite a few marked for wanting to use, and my 12-year-old is in love with this book and all the rainbows in it. And she informed me that like everything that's rainbow in here has to be knit for her. So I am not surprised. she has some demands. <laughs> so I'm not surprised by that at all. I currently uh, am getting her to knit again on her own so that hopefully she can knit some of this. But in case you haven't seen this pattern, this is a boxy loose tee with a horizontally knit yoke and then vertically knit body and it's knit from the bottom up so unfortunately i'm in the boring part right now but i am working with stroll tweed heather or stroll tweed and this is uh wellies heather and it's it's black you're gonna see that a lot for me too just so you guys know it's either it's all rainbows or it's black and this is what i have so far yeah not exciting it's one by one rib and then several inches of body. And uh, it'll be the base leg on that. Um, the pattern gauge is, I think, at post blocking is supposed to be six stitches per inch. I have no idea what I'm getting. I'm knitting a big enough size that it doesn't matter. That's another thing. I'm a very reckless knitter. I just kind of throw things at the wall and see what happens. And uh, these days I knit really big knits because it doesn't matter if my gauge is off or not. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it too much unless it's like monstrously off but you know with this I'll get somewhere around 10 inches plus or minus an inch or two uh, positive ease in it so it's fine <laughs> and that's all I'm working on and then uh, the top I will be doing in the yarn that is shown in the book which is mustache yarns in the comma colorway which used to be the comma sutra colorway which is this amazing i think like what is it 18 stripe rainbow or something does it say anymore it does not say on the skein anymore but many many stripes that that yarn is so amazing that sweater is going to be i'm going to be very jealous i'll just say that yeah i have quite a bit of this yarn in my stash because i also have other plans to knit some more of it into something else later so Whew, lots of rainbows okay so is that all of your whips? That must be. That's all of my whips. Okay. <laughs> so I I have two projects on the knitter, on the knitter, on the needles. You can tell it's been a while since I've podcasted. Yeah, it's gonna take us a little bit to loosen up here. It's it's very different podcasting with another person than by yourself. It really too. is. It's, it's little... like I'm gonna have to remind myself that I can talk to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I am working on a pair of socks. Ooh. I have one finish and I turned the heel in the other sock. Um, so the thing about these socks is that I cast them on sometime in early 2017. Oh goodness. I was knitting these socks the last podcast episode I recorded. Oh wow. So yeah, I haven't been knitting a lot of socks in the last couple of years, um, which is bad because over here I have a ton of sock yarn, but I haven't been buying any more sock yarn. So at least there's that. Mm. So this yarn is, it's, I think it's coming out a little bit more blue than it really is. But this is Fun Right Round, um, it's her 80-20 sock base. 
and the colorway is called Secret Handshake. So it's lilacs and it's got sort of rusty oranges mm. and pinks and greens, which are, I just love all of those colors mm -hmm. together. Um, I always knit my socks with a fish lip fist heel if I am knitting them for me. So that's what I'm using. And uh, this is just sort of my basic vanilla sock pattern that I have been using for years. It fits my feet fine, so I don't mess with it too often. Yeah, I don't with mine either. So, so those are my socks. Um, I'm hoping that I might have them done in 2021. So they're just like four year <laughs> socks instead of five year socks. And the only other project that I'm working on is the Duane Park Triangle. This is a pattern mm -hmm. by Kirsten Kapoor. And I'm gonna tell you right now that this yarn, because it's a blue green, it isn't gonna come out colored correct, uh, correctly. So it, it's a lot less vibrant than this and it's got more green in it. Um, it's, it reminds me sort of like sea glass, but darker in a way. Mm. And I am going to pair this, should have taken this out of the bag, with another skein of Madeleine Tosh in this liquid gold. So it will be, be really pretty. Those two together. Yeah, I think it'll be really pretty. Um, I don't know if this is going to work because we've never tried this on Zoom before. So uh, I've got a picture here of sort of what the rest of the shawl looks okay. like so people can have an idea. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it goes into an area. After I increase this for a while more, I will stripe the two colors together mm -hmm. and then it'll have like a lace border that I'll just use this for. And if nothing else, it'll be down in the show notes down there. So if yeah. you can see it and you'll have show notes. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything really much to say about my knits other than that. Um, so do you want to move on to FOs? Yeah, I could do that. Um, unless you want to talk about any other crafting works in progress you have right now. Well, I do have a spinning work in progress. Yeah, that's um, I good. am I'm working on a combo spin. So it is six different braids of Hello Fiber. Um, the colors, let me bring them up. It's a variety of fibers. I know there's some that are just merino. There's like merino, bamboo, nylon. Uh, there's a skin of BFL in there. So a bunch of fibers that are mixed together. Um, the colors are black mange, new season, wasp name, tall tail, and murmur. Um, and I have two of the black mange. So I just, I, I rip the braids apart and divide them into you know a certain number of equal pieces, and then I just sort of mixed and matched with them. So like I would have four ounces, but it would be from all the different braids. So yeah. bobbin one came out looking so like this, and I've been spinning it on my um, Hanson mini spinner, and. So I finished this last fall and then mm -hmm. a week, two weeks ago, I can't remember, I finally finished the second bobbin. So obviously I'm not um, doing this very quickly, but spoiler alert, Amanda has been knitting some really beautiful hands on sweaters and it's killing me. Um, I only have, I think one sweater that's totally hand spun. And so I think I'm going to need more. So um, I will have six bobbins of this. And when they're all spun up, I will tie them together and we'll see what we get. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how that one turns out too, because there's so many pretty colorways in there. Yeah, there's lots of golds and pinks and yeah, some of my favorite colors. It's going to be so pretty. Yeah, so I haven't really been spinning lately. Um, you'll probably see me spin more during the summer. I'll probably spin during the tour, which is the last time I really spun when I was um, active last year. I found that with the longer I've been crafting, um, I don't obsessively do any of my crafts anymore. Almost 
like there's almost like a spinning season now instead of I spin mm-hmm. all year round. You know what I mean? Like I spin during the tour seems to be the big time. The summer into the early fall is when I want to spin. I absolutely do know. This is so weird, but I always want to knit sweaters in the summertime. I don't yes. ever want to knit sweaters in the winter, but in the summer, that's all I want to knit. Yeah, I think in the winter, I was more, fo- in the late fall, I was more focused on cross-stitching before I switched mm-hmm. back into mm-hmm. knitting again about, it's been almost two months now again, since I started moving with uh, knitting more heavily. I was always a little bit during that time, but it was taking me like two months to finish really simple knits that if I was focused would have taken me 10 days at most. So yeah. And then I've been doing a lot of reading, which is not really conducive to knitting for me. I can't read and knit at the same time. No, I can't either. I wish I could, but I just, I can't. Yeah. I can do an audio book and knit and I can do television or, you know, visual media and knit, but I can't do reading and knitting. I can't focus on the book and I can't keep up with what I'm supposed to be doing with my hands. So no. Yeah. Okay. So then I guess uh, I'll move over to finished objects. Great. Okay. So I decided to do my three finished objects of 2021 so far. I've been doing about one a month. So in January, I finished an enchanted cardigan. Um, This is a pattern from, let's bring my show notes closer so I can actually read these, uh, from Expression Fiber Arts. Um, It's sometimes it's free and sometimes it's $5. Sometimes when I go to the site, it's free. Sometimes it's to pay for. And right now when I looked, it's to pay for. So this is a really simple knit that's, I'm trying not to give away too much of the secret sauce, but basically it's a rectangle that you seam up in certain places and it becomes a cardigan. So it's a really nice basic knit. It's nice mindless knitting. Um, it has really Is the deep- pattern easy to memorize. Yes, it's a it's a very easy pattern repeat, and it just shifts a little bit each time. There's just there's two variations on it, um, and it's really easy once you've done it a couple times. So this is wool folk tov tov t o v. Uh, it's color T04. So descriptive, right? (laughs) It's this kind of not quite a butterscotch colorway. Um, It's a slightly orange, brassy, mustardy kind of a color. (laughs) Um, As I described to Kate, it's kind of like the darkest color that's in my dog Tala's coat that I'm not quite sure what to call the color. It's not a very good color for me though. So this one's gonna go and live with someone else, but uh, there's little arm holes in here. Uh, I don't have a lot of room for spreading out, but as you can see, it's just, it's a very basic knit. And one of the things I like about this pattern is that while it is a knit pattern, it's slightly reminiscent almost of like granny stripes in a way. It's got that kind of quality to it where it, has that kind of rectangular feeling to it that's similar, but not quite the same. So I finished that. I've and got then, that pattern in my yeah. kitty too. I think it's, I bought yarn for that pattern before you yes. did, and you've made two or three of them now. I've made two, but the first one has to be ripped out because I thought I was smarter than the pattern. <laughs> and um, I made it, it got way too big once the water hit it. You know the the price of being reckless is sometimes it really comes to bite you in the butt. So that one did. So I'm going to have to re-rip it out, rip it out and re-knit it is what I'm going to do. Hopefully before the summer, we'll see, because it's gorgeous. I love the yarn. I just need to um, find the time to want to do it because I have to pick all the ends back out and do all that, which, uh, <laughs> work. and I alternated in it too. So I know I'm just like I don't want to do this but I'm going to and then as Kate mentioned I have knit not one but two hand spun sweaters since then so in February I finished the first hand spun sweater and if you did watch my podcast previously on my other channel um, you may remember that one of the last things I showed you was this massive hello yarn combo spin I did this very thin Uh, traditional three-ply yarn that took me two months start to finish working every day. (laughs) It it was a very labor-intensive process, and I got it knit up right away, and so I used 
a pattern that I already own called A Hint of Summer by Isabel Kramer. And it, I used it for the numbers and for doing the shoulder shaping and like figuring out how to do the neckline. But other than that, I just kind of did whatever I wanted after a certain point. I didn't follow the pattern. So here is the first one. It's a very lightweight. That is so pretty. It is. I love this so much. And let's see if we can get a little closer so you can kind of see what a three ply looks like when it knits up. It's very pretty, very marled. Um, and this yarn was, it's at most a light fingering weight in terms of heaviness. And it, this is like the lightest sweater. It weighs nothing. To knit this entire thing, it took 217 grams of yarn. <laughs> Two soft weight skeins for a sweater my size. And I'm not a tall human, but I am a wide human. So I am knitting in the extended sizes, even if it's the smaller end of the extended sizes. So to give you an idea, and in that amount of yarn, there was 1,259 yards of yarn knit. I know. <laughs> Slow crafting at its time. Uh, I remember when you were spinning that yarn <sighs> or that fiber, how long it took you because you were spinning so thin. Oh yeah. It was like frog's hair. Like, you know, when I, I took the pictures and like, there's just this wisp of, oh, it was so funny. I would have lost my mind. It's really therapeutic though, in its own way. It's just that it would be frustrating to spend an hour or two spinning and you get through like one little coil of fiber after all yeah. that time. It was never ending. And then knitting it was quite intensive too. I, I really focused on this one. I would say I spent a minimum of three hours a day knitting on this every day. There's about 80 hours worth of knitting in this sweater. So there's that one. And then the second one is some mystery hand spun, which Kate here tried to help me figure out what on earth it was because uh, past me did me really dirty on it. She, for some reason, didn't document it anywhere. It wasn't on my Ravelry, which I couldn't go check on my own. And it wasn't fully documented on my Instagram. <laughs> it wasn't, in, it was, it was featured on my old podcast, but none of the particulars were given about it. I just mentioned I spun it and showed it and then didn't say how much it weighed, what the yardage was, what was even in it. So all I knew is that it was a very loosely spun and plied two ply. I know one of the braids of fiber in there was becoming art and a colorway, I think it was called cactus globes, globe cactus maybe. It basically a succulents based colorway. Um, it said there was one Hello Yarn Club braid in there braid colorway not mentioned and then the rest was from a patchwork kit apparently so who knows um I had the weight and the yardage for two of them and I think after some digging I found well I didn't actually I had to weigh the third skein and then count the wraps and guess from there the best that I could what it was so I used the exact same pattern I used the exact same size I just knit it on bigger needles because the first one is close fitting, but still fairly loose. So for this one to get a much bigger sweater, I just did the same numbers, but bigger needles. And this is thicker yarn. And this is what came out here. It's see much wider. <laughs> it's big and it's like a blanket and it's very so cozy. It's very soft too, because of how underplied it was, but like some of my favorite spots here, like there's these kind of pastel bits in here that um, aren't very hello yarny, but it's funny how just one third being a different dyer's colors really changed mm -hmm. um, how this feels. But then there are other spots in here that are just so hello yarn um, that it's, yeah, it's just kind of funny, but like, I love this sleeve too, because there's this little shot of, this autumnal rainbow in there. That is so pretty. And it's interesting because when I saw the pictures that you sent me of this hand spun, I thought that the sweater was going to be a lot more brown than it was. It really, yeah. I felt like that hand spun really showed the brown more than any other color. It so did. And it started showing me pictures of how it was knitting up. I was so surprised. Yeah, there's almost no actual brown in here. Like there's like one line of brown right here. Um, and a lot of the stuff that reads as brown is actually really dark purple. 
or like brown purple or it's really dark okay. like hazel green brown is what it is but yeah it's really funny and then you've got these weird shots of like this bright lime green that reminds me of um like the first sundara colorway i fell in love with which was wow. limeade I don't know if you remember that one. It's a really- I don't remember one. that one at all. It was back when she used to do only 10 skeins of a color at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think it was even possibly from the mailing list days, which was before we actually got into that group. <laughs> yeah, I, I was not part of the Sundara group back when it was a mailing list. No, I wasn't. Or, I mean, not like, yeah. not, not that. I mean, when you had to order her stuff through a mailing list. Yeah, I remember hearing about it from other people who had been members longer and had been buying from her longer. But yeah, so I just thought that was so funny that I've got this stripe here that reminds me of that colorway hiding in the front. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, it's super soft, but because it was so underplied, it's probably going to pill like crazy. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it does, though, because I don't know what fibers these are. They might be better wearing than I think. I don't know. Because it didn't really pull apart when I was knitting it either, despite the fact that some of it was like one ply was holding it together and the other ply was basically just roving. <laughs> so who knows? So I only have one finished object to show you. I could have um I could have brought a couple more that I finished like in the last month or so, but they were things that I knit for my husband and good luck getting those back at this point. Mm, yes. They've yeah, been well loved yeah. already. Yeah, if you didn't document um, it right away, you're not getting them back. Yeah. So this is uh, my finished object. Yes. I knit a hitchhiker shawl by Martina Bem. And I used a skein of Miss Fab's Yowza. So the hitchhiker shawl calls for fingering weight yarn. Um, but Yowza is like a DK to worsted weight. And so it comes out, it came out a lot a lot bigger yeah. than what the pattern would normally um, knit up to. It's way, way yes. longer than my wingspan. And it's it's got just tons of beautiful colors in here. I love that oh. so much. <laughs> here goes my little earbud. Um, so I, um, I've knit probably, I don't six of these now, seven hitchhikers. I love the shawl. Um, I've knit a lot of shawls in my yeah. time. The shawls are one of my favorite things to knit um, because I really like wearing them. And I always tell myself I like regular triangle shaped shawls the best, mm -hmm. you know, because I like to wear my shawls in the front and it just, you know, you get all the shawl. But really when I knit like an oversized hitchhiker and I can just throw it over my neck like this this is really this is when I'll really wear a shawl yeah. so I, I I haven't it sounds like I've knit a lot of hitchhiker shawls but compared to the amount of other shawls I've knit um you know sorry I'm a little rusty at podcasting it's okay you haven't been able to tell like I said it's um, a little it's like three years yeah. so <laughs> so I really need to focus on making myself more shawls that are like this, that have these long tails that will hang down, yeah. that, you know, has a little bit of stuff in the front, um, because it's just what I like wearing. Um, and I will wear shawls like this around the house. You know, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, I, how I've dressed has changed dramatically. Of course, I'm not going into work every day. Yeah. But a lot of the, the knits that I would wear all the time, like the shawls that I would wear to work, yeah, I never wear those around the house, ever. Hmm. Um, but these I will. So hopefully I will be smart and knit a, a bunch more sort of asymmetric shawls like this. I was just um, thinking uh, how it feels kind of like a throwback to see the hitchhiker on here. I'm like, yeah, it feels like it's like 2012 again. <laughs> I know. Knitting hitchhikers. And you know, I don't feel like this is really so much the style anymore, but yeah, it's just what I'll wear. Um, I did make one pretty big modification to this, and that is in the regular hitchhiker. There's none of the eyelets like this has. Yeah, um, I was just thinking that I don't remember there being eyelets in the pattern. So 
So I added eyelids onto this. It was a really easy modification that you yeah. just, um, I don't think I'm giving too much weight. It's an eight row repeat. And in the last row, you just throw some eyelids in. I'm trying, I was trying um, to remember the name of the shawl that is similar, like it's a similar asymmetrical shawl, but it had eyelids in it like that. Cause I've knit it before too. And I was trying to think of what ones use that. But I like that model. There's so many of them. I don't mm -hmm. know. I can't think of it. This, this is my one FO for the week. <laughs> I'm hoping yeah. these guys will be done next time so I can probably move on to another sock that I cast on in 2017 <laughs> because I still have. You have a lot of random works in progress hiding in your house, whereas I've always been pretty monogamous in my knitting. So I think I have one true hibernating work in progress that you and I were talking about. It's a shawl that I can't decide if I want to finish it or not, or if I want to rip it, or if I want to modify it, that I cast on in 2015. And it's been sitting there, I think, since May 2015, untouched now. That's and almost six years. <laughs> I know. I thought about that and I was like, ooh, that's been a long time to just let something sit there. But other than that, the only other things I have that I don't work on regularly are like long term blanket projects. Yeah. And I just pull those out when I feel like working on them or I have scraps to put in them, which most of my scraps are in storage in New York right now. So they aren't getting a lot of love these days. Uh, I, I do have a lot of stuff that I have that's just like hibernating right now. And that's not normal for me. Um, I used to be a really, really monogamous knitter. And then I sort of stepped away from that when I started podcasting um, back in 2013, I think it was, just because it's a lot more interesting if you're watching a podcast and right. somebody has a bunch of stuff on the needles. Um, and then, you know, I was pretty good about starting what I finished when I was podcasting before, but once I stopped podcasting and started working full time, um, yeah. that just totally went out the window. So I'm, I am trying to limit the number of new cast ons I do right now just because I do have way more stuff on the needles than I'm comfortable with and I I have a little basket it's over here it's it's not a little basket it's actually a giant basket but we'll yes. call it a little basket because it makes me feel better um and I really ask it about once a year I go through that basket and I I do look at everything that I have on the needles and I make some decisions so it's still overflowing with projects, but it's maybe not as quite quite as bad as it used to be. Yeah, well, it'll be fun to get those done. And if you need someone to cheerlead for you and be excited for you getting those off the needles, I'll do it. Well, you know, I don't know if that would work for me because <laughs> I'm the sort of person where I'm like, if somebody's like, you can do it. I'll be like, I'm not going to do it just because you said I can. <laughs> but even if it's me. <laughs> I don't think you recognize the depth of my stubbornness, Amanda. I really don't think you see that part of me. Oh, I don't know. I have a corn for a mother, and she's pretty like that, where she'll do the mm -hmm. exact opposite of whatever anybody wants her to do. And I'm, oh, that was an odd knot in there. Okay. I thought I was, I thought I had a break in my yarn, and I'm like, oh no, there's a knot. Oh, and no. then I, I was just picking back to get ready to add it in, and then it was actually a knot in the yarn that I, once I had loosened it, it just popped out to a full string. Yay. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so I do know the type, the kind of a heck you, I won't do what you tell me kind of a thing. Oh, you think I can do it? No, <laughs> that's fine. But yeah, I am positive. If you ask my mother, she would tell you I've been that way my entire life. Obstinate little bull, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so hopefully between the two of us, we'll have enough variety to carry a podcast, however often we record. And we should probably warn all of you, we are not going to have a set schedule, especially at first. We're keeping this really nice and loose with low yeah. expectations because who knows what life is going to throw at us next. So yeah. Hopefully at least once a month, you'll see us maybe a yeah. little more often. 
I, I definitely, I don't want to go more than once a month, but I, I have to be realistic that while school is in session, um, it is a lot harder for me to podcast. Yes. Um, so three weeks a month, two weeks yeah, if my, you're lucky. My schedule is really open, so that's not a problem because I'm nocturnal and uh, it's, what time is it? Oh, it's 1240 in the morning and I'll be no, up. It's not. It's 938 a.m. I'm also a day ahead of you. I'm in the future talking to you all. But yeah, I stay up all night. So for me, it's not a problem. Once everybody in my house is in bed, I can do whatever the heck I want to do. It's so convenient that you are nocturnal because if you weren't, we would hardly ever get to talk to each other. That's true. We'd have a really hard time setting this up. So mm -hmm. You're welcome. That's the thing for me that went out the window. Once the pandemic started, I was sick of trying to day walk anymore. And I'm like, you know what? If life is going to be awful, I'm going to be well rested on the schedule. My circadian rhythm tells me I'm supposed to be on. So not everybody's a fan of this schedule in this house, but that's too bad. I'm almost 40 and I'm sick of being tired all the time. So yep. Now I stay up until like 6 a.m. every day. So Meanwhile, I get up at about 6 a.m. every day, naturally. Yes. Sometimes 7 if I'm lucky. Yeah, so once we're both stateside again, it's going to be interesting trying to figure things out a little bit, but we'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be fun. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Day. All right, so I think we got uh, crafting covered. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so then at, I think after crafting, we will find something else we want to talk about. And I don't have any media I want to talk about right now. There's nothing I've been reading or watching that I'm particularly enthusiastic about that I feel like talking about. <laughs> We've been, there's two seasons of Jeopardy on Netflix, and that's Ooh. what we've been watching. We just finished the last episode of the two seasons last night. And now I'm really sad because I can't find other places to stream Jeopardy mm -hmm. online. And all I want to do is just like watch Jeopardy. six hours worth of Jeopardy and knit. I kind of like the sound of doing that actually. <laughs> I love trivia. So for me, that sounds like a great time just listening to uh, the answers to a bunch of questions and seeing how many of them I know. That's what I always like to do when I was watching Jeopardy. Um, and then learning something new. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing uh, that I should mention that sucks a lot of my time is I am a huge fan of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yes. I'm not playing as much right now, but I am also. It's been such a fun thing during the pandemic because, you know, obviously not only are you like in another country, but there was at one point when you first found out that you were going to um, be moving to South Korea that I was like, oh my gosh, I want to come visit you. Right. And obviously that's not happening. So that's not the thing anymore. we can visit anymore. each other just on our Animal Crossing Island. Yeah, yeah, that is a bummer. And that's the thing it's going to be so hard when we leave here is that you know inevitably a bunch of people are going to be like, you were in Korea? What did you do the whole time? And the answer is, I sat in my high rise apartment and uh, that's about it because this pandemic happened. I don't know if you all heard about it or not. And uh, the Korean peninsula took it a lot more seriously than some other places and travel and everything in the country is, they have, they're all still on fairly high alert saying, hey, we have to continue to stay locked down and distancing. Do not do things you don't need to do sanitize, wear your masks, stay away from each other for a little while longer because the one time Seoul tried to come out of lockdown, they were back in in under a week because yeah, infection rates started to go back up again. So that has been a thing. Uh, there's been no traveling for that reason. And maybe with staying an additional year and hopefully by the time people all get vaccinated, maybe we can finally take some vacation and just go see a couple parts of the peninsula that we were planning yeah. to well and for us you know we um we moved to boulder june of 2020 and so people 
you know, will ask, like, oh, what do you think of Boulder? And it's like, I don't really know anything about Boulder. Uh, we moved here in the middle of the pandemic. We have a child who is immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. So the amount of things that we can do outside of the house is very limited. So, you know, even though we've been here for almost a year, it doesn't really feel like home because we haven't really gotten to explore it very much. Um, right. You know, I don't really know anybody here still because I can't, you know, go out and, and meet people. I can understand that. And I was gonna say, I know that you are the kind of person who likes to get out and see things wherever you're living and yeah. do a lot of stuff where we tend to live places and maybe we'll get out a little bit. We kind of just find our little niche route of, you know, places we know we want to go. And it's the same thing everywhere we've been. Well, hopefully wherever you go next is Colorado. It is one of our top two choices based on places we know that we can go. Um, we want to stay someplace where there are more regular seasons that we're used to and that there's winter and snow. Um, so hopefully we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I've got all my fingers crossed. Hopefully in about three to four months, we'll have an idea of what might be opening up. And then by the end of fall, we should have a good idea of where we're supposed to be heading. So, yeah. Well, do we have anything else we want to talk about today? I don't know. Do we want to talk about something else we've been doing that's kind of craft adjacent? We've both been a... Uh, well, here I have a new We met Linus before. This is Chester. Oh, hey, Chester. Between the two of them, I'm sure you'll, you'll get to know them well. Yes. I can't go anywhere without them following me around. He's kind of your alpha cat, yes? He is, yes. Whatever Chester wants, Chester usually gets. And that um, includes with the humans, not just mm -hmm. the other cats. Um, his nickname is the Duke. Um, oh, that's right. Yes. Because he's, he's probably like cat royalty or something, he thinks. <laughs> yeah, but don't they all? Unless we want to talk about going through our patterns through that we downloaded from Ravelry. Um, no? It's up yes. to you. It's up to you. It's up to me. Oh no. You should never leave a decision with me. <laughs> yeah, just we've been having a lot of fun chatting behind the scenes as we've been going through our patterns and making fun of some of our more interesting choices in the past of things that we decided we wanted to download. And what on earth were we thinking? Like we should probably give a little um background to this so Probably. with the Ravelry redesign um one of the two of us is no longer able to use Ravelry that's me <laughs> and the other one that's me um is not using Ravelry either because yeah I'm going to support people with disabilities and I believe them um so we have been trying to get all of our patterns off of Ravelry and it is definitely interesting to see what things I thought I was gonna knit, but like, mm -hmm. what was I thinking? I was never gonna knit those things. Oh yeah. It, like I was making fun of myself so much last night. I'm like, what were you thinking past Amanda? Like these beaded wristlets with lace. Oh. <sighs> when was I planning to wear these? Like I have kind of sensitive skin. When did I think I was going to get away with having all those beads rubbing all over my skin and it wasn't going to bother me? Well, and the number of things that I downloaded or yeah. that I either, you know, got for free or that I purchased that were lace, um, it's just crazy. Like I yes. am not a lace sort of person. No. Eyelids, eyelids like this is about as lace as I usually go. I, I, I really love garter stitch. Yeah, um, same. I like simple knits. Um, so why I download all these incredibly intricate lace patterns, mm -hmm. I have no idea. And for years, I thought I absolutely hated knitting socks. And the reason I hated knitting socks is because all the patterns I would make or try to make back then would be like super lacy and intricate. And I hated yes. it. So it wasn't until I like allowed myself 
to knit just plain socks. It was like, oh, wait, I really like making socks. Same. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, thought I was a lot fancier than I really am. Like these super intricate gossamer lace butterflies knit into the lace kind of a thing. And I'm like, what would I even wear that with? When I'm you a- sent me pictures of some of these things, it made me laugh because none of them looked at all like anything you would ever make. And all I can think is they must have been for free, you know, through knitting mm-hmm. pattern offers or some other venue before that, um, that they were in the free section on Ravelry. And I downloaded them thinking, well, maybe someday I'll knit this. And I think it's because too, when I was a younger knitter, like being a lace knitter felt like that's when you're an adult knitter. And like when you're a proper yeah. knitter is when you can knit one of these lacy shawls then you know you are a proper knitter and um yeah I have zero interest in it now because I will Mm -hmm. never wear one the I'd say I own only two things that I've made that have lace and one of them is the germinate shawl which Mm -hmm. you and I both knit which we copied off of Amanda from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery that's got a little bit of modern leaf lace in it yeah, I mean, I don't mind a little bit of lace if it's like a simple detail on the mm-hmm. shawl, but like really intricate lace or shawls where the entire thing is lace. Okay, I have to amend that. I have three things. And then I have two tops. One is, what is it? The Wolf River top, which was very popular for a long time. The I Wolf remember River that pattern, yeah. Which is, I almost wore today but it's too warm to wear right now which is a very big modern lace panel in the front Mm -hmm. and then I have I forgot what it's called but it's a skein deer knits summer linen shell that has a big chevron lace detail in the front but that's about as lacy and as fancy as I'm going to get uh like you I wear mostly things that are either garter stitch or they're just plain stockinette with like maybe like little texture details like this I tend to prefer my fanciness through like using hand spun instead or self-striping yarn I prefer to let the yarn do the work yeah I I totally agree I am like sort of my base wardrobe is is a lot of grays dark grays and black Mm -hmm. so if I want to accessorize it's going to be with like pops of color it's not going to be with like really intricate design Yeah, which is (laughs) why a lot of my knitting isn't going to be that uh, exciting when you guys see it with me here, because um, I've hit the point in my knitting too, where I'm trying to knit things that I'm actually going to wear, not just things I enjoy knitting. And those two things are very different, I've been discovering. Um, So since I'm going to wear mostly black, (laughs) a lot of my yarn now is black. So spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot of hard to see knits from me with maybe little details like a rainbow yoke or something similar. Sorry, I'm not <laughs> excited. <laughs> I, I think I only have one oh, sweater wow. quality, quantity of like totally black yarn, but it's not totally black because it's got it's that hedgehog Tweety that has like pop Tweety Noir. Color. Yes. Yeah. We both have some of that. Yeah, I, I really probably should knit a lot of like fingering weight black sweaters because I mean, I would wear a fingering weight black cardigan every single day of my life, pretty much. If I, yeah, if I when I bought it. this yarn, I bought two 10 packs of it because it's black with just enough interest because it's got the tweed flecking. So it's got a little cream and a little brown tweedy bits in it. Um, it's almost, I'm in my mind, I think of it as like dark badger, almost kind of yarn, you know, where it's like, it's black and it's a little brown and a little cream without the gray. Um, but I bought a whole bunch of it at once because I thought, you know, this is a yarn that if I knit cardigans or pullovers out of it, I'm going to wear the heck out of them because hi, most of my wardrobe is black or gray. (laughs) Um, there's little shots of purple and pink 
in my wardrobe. Occasionally you'll see a teal in there now, but uh, yeah, as the older I get, I've just been kind of um, honing in on a more specific color palette that kind of works yeah. for me. Um, that just makes my whole wardrobe more versatile. All right. I, uh, Sorry, weird pause. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like, I think we might be talked out for at least podcast talking. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so that's about it. We've been knitting and going through Ravelry patterns and making fun of ourselves for past choices that arguably though, had uh, more modern patterns been available at that time, it would have been interesting to see, would we have picked the patterns were more favorable towards now, or would we have still been grabbing those same uh, like lace patterns and I don't think I would have been ill-fitting sweaters and yeah it's been interesting looking at patterns from pre-2010 or even pre-2018 before um, extended sizing in patterns was better mm -hmm. I don't know how many patterns I've run into that the top size was like a 50 or a 54 inch bust and the arm circumference is 15 to 16 inches Whew. that's not how that works not yeah, usually. I remember, uh, you know, when I really started knitting seriously, I learned to knit in 2004, but it wasn't probably until like late 2007, early 2008, that I really started knitting a lot. Um, and at that time, yeah, the top pattern size was almost always like 48 inch plus. Yeah, I remember like in interweave knits and like other knitting magazines, oftentimes the top size was between a 40 and a 44 inch bust. Mm -hmm. And that was as large as it went. And I was less fat back then. But even then I was at the top of the size range. And these were still in the what I think of as the what not to wear years where everyone mm -hmm. was trying to wear the closest fitting clothing possible. Um, and even then, like I look at all the sweaters I made at that time and they never fit me properly. I was always having to tug them down because they were too tight and too short. <laughs> it's not a ghost. It's jumping ship. I'm trying to wear earbuds so it makes it, you know, my family can definitely hear me if they're upstairs. So yeah, trying to make it a little nicer for, for them, but my earbud also does not stay in my ear apparently. So mm. Sorry about that. It's all right. I'm just having a good giggle at watching it jump ship. <laughs> Down it goes. I have very small ears. I do too. So they fall, everything falls out of my ears so easily. That's why I don't wear earbuds. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so okay. I think that's pretty good for a first recording. Yeah. We'll eventually get more comfortable and into uh, some kind of a pattern here, and then you'll have a better idea of what to expect from us. So, yeah, hopefully it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much to all of you who joined us today. Yes, and uh, we don't even have a sign off or anything. Yeah, we're. We're winging it a little bit today. We are. Eventually, we'll figure these things out. Yeah, going from one podcast to a two-person, like a one-person podcast to a two-person podcast, mm -hmm. it's going to take some getting used to. It really is. Yeah, so do we want to just say goodbye? Yeah. We don't know what to say to anybody. <laughs> okay, say goodbye, Amanda. Goodbye, Amanda. <laughs> Goodbye, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs>